Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Scenes. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is a Friday Sews video, so as always, a huge thank you to Jen from Today in Jen Sewing Room for setting up this fabulous hashtag. If you are new to my channel, you are very, very welcome. And if you are a regular viewer or subscriber, then you're very welcome back. Uh, thank you, as always, to everybody who's watched any of my previous videos, anybody who's left a like, anybody who's left a comment. Thank you very, very much. So I'll let you know what I got up to last week and I also have some plans for this week. Uh, one thing I wanted to say before I get started was thank you so much for all the love on my green Laura PR Leah top that I wore in last week's Friday Sews. I'll link it below. There was two things I totally forgot to mention about that pattern and uh, I think a few of you are going to try it out which is wonderful. Oh there's three things I wanted to tell you actually. One, uh, if you are somebody who usually has an issue with sway back adjustments on t-shirts this pattern comes with a centre back seam which gives a really really nice fit. That's one thing to bear in mind. The second thing is that the pattern comes with pleats on the front bodice. I didn't put them in because it totally felt like a maternity top and that stage of my life is over and I didn't really want to wear a top that made me felt like I was wearing a maternity top. And the third thing, um, I got asked a few times if I would consider doing a sew along because the neckline is pretty tricky. However, the lovely Laura PR has actually stepped in and done a sew along of her own on her Instagram channel, which is marvellous because I think she'd do a much better job than I ever would. So I think she's now saved that to her Instagram highlights. So I'll link her channel below and she walks through all that tricky neckline detail, but it's a fabulous top. And if you get a little bit of help on doing the construction on the neckline, I think it's well, well worth it. So literally during the week, I said, oh, I meant to mention those things. So noted it down, but I definitely had to mention them here. So thank you. So what have I been getting up to since I spoke to you last? So last week we got a snow day in Dublin, which is quite rare, but very, very exciting. So that was really, really pretty to wake up to. And uh, it did stay for about half a day and then totally melted, but it was a bit of fun. Um, we had a lovely, lovely family weekend and I did get a little bit of sewing done last week, which I'll go into. Um, I'm going to give you a very tiny quilting update, a very tiny crochet update, and then chat to you more about what I got up to for my sewing. And then I'll talk to you what I got planned for next week. So the first thing I'll talk about very, very briefly is my patchwork class, my quilting class that I go to every week. And what we did this week was made sure all our blocks were the same size and also put a few little borders on our applique pat, um, block and also on our English paper piecing um, block as well. This will be a little hexy and I have attached this now with a little ladder stitch. So those two are ready to, to go into my little sampler quilt. I now have 12 blocks and next Monday we're going to be learning how to do the sashing and I believe we're going to be doing corner stones in the little sashing as well which hopefully will work out really well. So looking forward to going to my class on that. So that's my little quilting update. For my crochet update, I now have, I think, over 40 granny square daisies done and I've now just learned how to attach them together. So excuse the hook. So this is what they now look like attached together. Um, I'm doing the attach as you go way of doing it. Um, and I learned this from uh, Bella Coca. Bella Coco Crochet. So I will link her channel below. So I'm just making these and I'm kind of thinking it's going to be some sort of cardigan jumpery type thing so watch this space but yes I do have now over 40. I basically kept going until I ran out of one of the colours and I've now run out of yellow so it seemed like a good enough place to stop. So that's what I've been doing on the crochet front. Um, on the sewing front what's happened this week so I've got some very nice happy posts that came last week and I will show you you might be able to guess by the colour. This is of course my Frocktails fabric so I have an invisible zip and I've recently sourced an invisible sip vut because I bought one and then properly lost it and never got a chance to use it. No idea where it is. So I now have a proper invisible zip foot, which is great. So this is the beautiful fabric that I'm going to make the Mary dress from Pattern Society out of for Frocktails, which is going to be in Galway on the 11th of May. So this is beautiful um, kind of taffeta fabric, I think. And then what I'm going to pair with it is this. So yes, you'll definitely see me coming. So I think this is going to be the, the little kind of sleeve detail. I think here, I haven't quite worked out how to do that. But uh, so that's my fabrics that's now here, which is great. I have the pattern printed. I just have to stick it together and then get started on this. I did order fabric for a toile. Absolutely, absolutely toiling this dress. 
Uh, so on the sewing front, um, during that snow day, obviously I thought it was a great idea to get started on a dress, a lovely floaty spring summer dress. So I got my Tilly in the Buttons Lotta dress done in this beautiful zebra fabrics. This is a woven and I hadn't done the Lotta dress in a woven before. I just done it in a knit. So it worked out really well. It's got the nice elasticated waist and just short sleeves. Um, I didn't actually have enough fabric to do the long sleeves. Never mind. And instead of the facing, I bound the neckline. So this is the Specky Seamstress binding that I got from Beyond the Pink Door Advent Calendar, which I have the tiniest bit left because I've been using it so much. And she is definitely one of the first places I want to go to. Um, I want to go to their stand when I go to Stitch Festival in two weeks time because I just love their binding and I think it really finishes off every make. So I was delighted to get this done despite it being freezing cold outside. But yes, love this. So while I was making this, I was thinking really, it's still March. Why was I thinking I could wear a lovely floaty dress? So what I did then was I looked around and as luck would have it, I had ordered a cotton jersey fabric from Dries and Stoffen recently and I was able to make a Tilly in the Buttons Agnes top. So I hadn't made one of these in a long time. I really, really like them. I'll pop in a picture. It's basically the most underestimated and hardest working piece in my wardrobe for sure. I have a few of them. I have a few in white, in navy, in black. I wear them all the time. They're perfect on their own. I've got a few short sleeve versions. I wear them under things. I think they're great. So it's got a lovely um, scoop neckline but I think it's going to be perfect if I do need to wear it under an Agnes dress or under a fringe dress next week if I get a bit cold. So this is the Agnes and then the last thing I got done last week was I managed to pick up this beautiful fabric from the fabric counter uh, because I will tell you shortly why I was in the fabric counter last week but it's this beautiful kind of jacquard knit fabric and I decided to make up another max tee because I am obsessed with this pattern. They only had 90 centimetres of this fabric and I easily got it out of that. Um, so a beautiful stand up neckline. I thought I might have to interface the neckline but it seems to kind of behave itself. Um, I bound the um, the armholes because I don't like doing facings and then I just turned up the, the hemline. So let me stand up and show you what it's like. So I've just, it's like this and then it dips down a little bit at the back. So uh, no alterations and uh, it's just a straight size eight and I really, really like the fit and I just love this top so much. And this will go nicely over my dress as well if I am really, really cold. So again, this will kind of match uh, the two dresses that I've got for Stitch Festival. So I think I pretty much have my two ensembles ready for Stitch Festival. So if you do see me there, if you are at Stitch Festival, I will either be wearing a yellow dress or I will be wearing a purple and green fringe dress. So keep an eye out and if you do see me, please come up and say hello. I would love to say hello. So that's what I got sewn up this week. So uh, three little things. Uh, for the keen eyed amongst you, did I get my pogo nip sewn up? No. So I've got my pogo nip all cut out, ready to go right here. Excuse me. But my week was totally taken over. So I was happily saying when I left you last week, yeah, I've got a few plans, like don't want to put myself under any pressure, you know, haven't got much to do this week. Email from the school. It's World Book Day. And I sat back and said, how did this not dawn on me sooner? I knew full well it was World Book Day. My boys have been talking about it. And then, of course, older French seams. Please, mummy, will you make me a Zog costume? So if you're not familiar with Zog, Zog is, we have, we have two books because my boys just love this series of books. So it is Julia Donaldson and these are the Zog books. There's Zog and then there's also um, Zog and the Flying Doctors. So my boys just love these books. So you can see here that it's an orange dinosaur, wings, tail, little kind of unicorn style, style horn, ears, and of course his, his golden star, if you're familiar with the books. So I said, right, how am I going to make a Zog costume in a few days? So I took my uh, older boy up to the fabric counter on Saturday. So luckily not too far away. Although of course those stop go systems, those traffic, everything took me hours to get there and back, but it was well worth it. So what I managed to pick up was, aside from this, which was a little bit of a treat for myself, um, I managed to pick up some fleece and some and a zip and all the bits and pieces I need to make a Zog costume. So I am so delighted with how this came out. He literally hasn't taken it off since I made it. Every free minute he can put this on, he does, which is just wonderful. Um, he wore it into school and absolutely loved it. So I am just delighted that is all you can ask for. If he's happy, I'm very, very happy. So before I show you this, actually, so this uh, pattern is, it's called the Ultimate Costume Creator and it's by um, Peekaboo Patterns. And I had actually used this pattern before. Thankfully, when I went rooting for it last weekend, I had had the foresight to get it printed on A0, colour 
and not cut it out. I traced it. So I'd made the age four previously for older French seams when he was four. And I made him this dinosaur costume two Halloweens ago. So this is how the dinosaur looks. And then I just added on this little patch at the front and then it's just got little legs. So it's all made out of fleece from the fabric counter again. So this time I was able to go and find it and trace out the age six. And here is my Zog costume. And I'm just so happy with how it came out. My sewing machine is now no longer talking to me because I made it sew so through so many layers of fleece and zips and interfacing and embroidery thread and everything. So my sewing machine is not talking to me anymore. That's why I treated it and myself to this top afterwards as a reward. So this is Zog. So I did the straight pattern from the Ultimate Costume Creator, age six, and I used both the dinosaur spikes. So the spikes go on the hood and then the spikes go all the way down the back and then the spikes go on the tail. But then I also used the pattern piece for the unicorn, which is this little bit. And basically instead of the unicorn here, I pasted it here with the eyes to make it more Zog-like. I wrapped a bit of embroidery thread around it. Then I also added, I think these are I think they either call them like the cow ears or the dog ears or something, so I added those. Um, I made up my own pattern piece for the eyes. I just did a little bit of white uh, fleece and then I sewed on a few buttons. Um, so I did a little pink filly inside the ears. I added these teeth to make it look like the, shall I show you the one here? Yeah, so his teeth on the front. Uh, so added those, just sewed those into the, the seam here, put a bit of interfacing on them. It's got yellow cotton jersey, or yellow, orange cotton jersey on the inside because you don't need two layers of fleece. So the, the hood is fully lined. Then on the back, I self-drafted wings, literally just drew them and hoped for the best. Um, and then I've lined them in pink fleece and I've just sewed them into the, the back seam. The, probably you should have been able to sew them into the middle seam, but there was no way my sewing machine was doing that. So I just sewed them onto the outside here, but I think they look quite effective. Um, then the other thing I did was I hacked the front bodice piece to do be colour blocked. So I cut out this panel here and cut this in white and sewed them together to make his little white tummy, a lovely big zip here. I made his golden star. So that's just my Cricut uh, iron on gold. And then I just put a bit of ribbon on this to make it look like his golden star. Um, and then the only other things I added were the little claws. So these are just pieces of um, fleece that I, I added a little seam allowance in here and then just did zigzag for his claws, put them into the cuffs and also put them into the feet as well to make them look like he was where he had claws and the cuffs and the um the cuffs and the leg leg cuffs are orange jersey as well so that's how i managed to make zog and then after all of that i put in of course made by mummy so this is it uh it took about three evenings three full evenings to make um but he is absolutely delighted i'm delighted and because younger french seams is now wearing that dinosaur i hope this will go through the ranks as well and get an awful lot of love and an awful lot of use and yeah he is very very cute so that was that was my week so this is why i did not get my pogo nip done but look well worth it and uh, yeah the, the two of them had a wonderful time this week so that was Zog. So apologies if you're not familiar with those books, but if you are, yeah, I think if you know, you know. Um, right, so that was my week. Uh, so I'll let you know what I'm planning to do in the coming week. So um, there will be no sewing with fleece, I can assure you that. What I would like to get done is I have all of my poganip in the little fleece cut out all interfaced, all done, everything sorted there. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to do any garment sewing this week. I think I've done quite a lot of that recently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few little bags and stuff for Stitch Festival. Uh, so I thought, look, I'd just change tack and do a little bit of kind of more crafty sewing this week. So I have got two things cut out. I have got a little, as I dropped on the floor, um, I found a pattern, ooh, that fell over. I uh, found a pattern for, it is called a double zipper coin purse. And it's this little one here. It's got a little zip at the back for your money and then it's got a little zip at the front for your credit cards. And I think that'd be very cute for Stitch Festival. And I think I'd do it. I found um, this lovely fabric in my, in my kind of cotton stash. So my lovely aunt recently has started giving me a lot for fabric. She's a fabulous um, sewist and a patchworker herself. And she started giving me a bit and piece of her stuff, which is marvellous. And then I thought I'd line it in this really fun kind of sciency fabric that I got from Crafty Studio years ago. And as luck would have it, I have a navy and green zip, which is wonderful. So that's all cut out, interfaced, ready to go. 
The next thing I'd like to make is something that I've made previously, which is an Adam Sews hipster bag, the crossbody one, the quilted one. So for that, to make my life difficult, I decided to make it in the same fabric as my Axty. So here is, I've got this ready to go. So this is um, lining and uh, fusible foam and the, well it's jersey, but I think hopefully once it's been stabilised and quilted it won't be stretchy. And then I've got all my lining pieces cut out, I've got my binding in this nice stripey fabric and I've got my zips ready to go. So I'm going to make that bag, I'll pop in a picture of the one I've made previously. I've made one for myself, the crossbody, I've made myself one as a makeup bag, I've made my sister one, so this will be my fourth one, but it's a fabulous, fabulous pattern. So that's what I'd like to get done this week. Oh, and the webbing I have for that, this is the webbing I have as well, which I think is really, really nice. So I left that left over from another project. So I think this webbing would look really nice with this. I think it matches very, very nicely. So that's what I'd like to get done. Um, not to put any pressure on Izzy if she is watching this, but maybe her Quilties Ago block could be coming out this weekend. Who knows? Hopefully it will. So I've done two of Izzy's Quilties Ago blocks, her series on YouTube, which I'll link below. Fabulous. So hopefully she's got another one coming and uh, we can do block number three, which would be very, very exciting. Um, and then also, um, my what else oh no that, and then my patchwork classes on monday so hopefully we'll get the sashing done on that so we'll see how i go um i think mr french scenes is going to be traveling so i might have a little bit more free time to sew we'll see how it goes uh so next friday um my parents are coming up because it is patrick's day that that weekend so that'll be fun and then probably i won't be able to do a friday sews the week after because we're getting a few housey things done and my sewing room is going to be completely out of commission but i think that just means i'll have to move my sewing machine elsewhere because I won't not be sewing, as I'm sure you're aware. So that is my week. So that was my previous week and that is the week to come. They're my plans. Thank you very, very much for joining me as always. I really do enjoy these Friday Sew catch-ups and I love hearing from you in the comments. So please, if you have any comments on anything I've made, anything I'm going to get made up, please, please, please let me know. If you're coming to Stitch Festival, please let me know if you're coming on either the Friday or the Saturday because they're the two days that I'm going to be there. Uh, so please let me know and I would love to meet up with as many people as possible. Uh, if you'd like to leave me a comment just letting me know what you're sewing, I always love to hear that. I get huge inspiration from uh, people letting me know what they're sewing for the different climates they're sewing for, for the different people they're sewing for. I just love it. I really, really do. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're all getting some time for some lovely, lovely sewing. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely weekend and I will catch you all again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.